Okay, hello, it's uh, Paul Green from the uh, business community uh, doing another one of our Spotlight On interviews where we put somebody uh, in the hot seat um, and prod and poke them a little bit to find out what makes them tick and a little bit about their uh, uh, business journey. So I'm pleased to say I'm joined by uh, uh, Robin today. Hi, Robin. Hi there. How are you, Paul? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. So before, um, uh, as I said, we prod and poke you and find out a little bit about you, do you just want to introduce yourself and let people know who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is Robin Kirkley, and I am a video producer. I'm a storyteller by trade. Uh, video, I find, is one of the best ways of telling stories. I've worked in a commercial in the commercial world for about 40 years now, but uh, I think you've got a few questions, Paul, that will um, answer those, those sorts of um, details. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to find out a little bit about your story. So tell us a little bit about the journey that sort of brought you to where you are today. Uh, well, basically, um, I started in advertising as a young copywriter in 1982. And uh, I've worked ever since creating content. I'm a content creator, basically. And I've always worked with copywriting and video production. In those days, it was film. And I continue to do that today. So that's my journey. It's been a, a long journey, but I've always worked in the commercial world and had very broad experience with companies large and small. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about the, the storytelling then. How, how do you work with clients that come to you to get their, their message across? What's the sort of process that, that you go through so that you uh, create their, their story? I find that storytelling is one of the most effective ways of getting attention. Um, it's only in the last sort of 10 or 12 years that I've studied storytelling. But when I began in 1982, I did it somehow instinctively. When I look back on all of my advertisements and my television ads and the documentaries that I did for clients in those days, uh, they were all stories. <clears throat> and I think it's because I grew up listening to stories and I was always captivated by stories it's like like most of us, you know, we, we begin with maybe being read bedtime stories and we go off on little journeys and we imagine things. And I kept that going because in my teenage years, I wrote a lot. I began writing uh, songs and poems and stuff like that. I just began expressing myself. Uh, and then when I did get into advertising, writing came fairly naturally. And it also came fairly naturally to tell stories. And... <clears throat> I was very fortunate that the creative director in one of my first agencies, um, I worked for Saatchi and Saatchi, Foot Cone and Belding and Benton and Bowles, but my creative director in Benton and Bowles loved stories, <laughs> which for me was quite fortunate. I just thought, oh, I've landed in the right place, you know, and um, my ads were very well received. So I was encouraged to continue telling stories in business. And that is, you know, large businesses and small businesses. I, clients were like uh, banks and large manufacturing companies and um, small uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, so I had a range of clients in, in the advertising agency and I found ways of telling stories. And I always found that they were very effective. Then when I began studying storytelling, uh, when I started my freelance journey in 2012, after 30 years of working in agencies and working for businesses, um, I began studying storytelling. And that's when I realized why they were so powerful mm -hmm. and how to use them. And I've continued studying. Never, day, never does a day go by when I don't learn more about business, about marketing, about storytelling, about people, about communicating. Mm -hmm. And, and when you start working with clients, do, do you find that you have to tease the story out of them or do you, are they are they aware of what their story is? Is it because I guess your approach is different to some? Uh, story finding is one of the important aspects of storytelling because you've obviously you've got to find the story. And a lot of businesses are really not aware of their stories. Mm. And. You, you can think, okay, well, I can tell the story of the founder. 
you know, that, that's kind of a, one that comes to mind straight away. But there are many other types of stories uh, that can be told in business. And um, I mean, I've got a bunch of ideas, but you know, they're, they're, you can tell stories about um, uh, the founder, you can tell stories about the, uh, the customers, you can tell, tell stories about the products and services, uh, you, you know, the, 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 the brand itself, that's a different type of storytelling. Um, there are advertorials, there are case studies, testimonials, uh, there's stories for video, uh, social media, sorry. All of these are stories um, and it, it's a case of digging in and looking for them and finding them in all of these various areas, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So I ask people on uh, these sessions, you know, what, what's your why? What's your sort of driving force? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Uh, what effectively, you know, what, what makes you tick? So what would you say your, your why is in terms of what you do from a business perspective? I care about helping people and solving their problems. And I always have. It's been my one of my great motivators. Uh, and I like creating content for companies that provide great value by solving customers' problems. And I enjoy that because I enjoy helping people solve their problems. And when I deal with customers who have a product or a service that solves a real problem that people have, I just think it's, um, it's a good fit. You know, I immediately start thinking of ways that I can help my customer communicate with their customers and really get the story across of how they can help and how they can add value. And I think that's my why, is because I really like helping people and helping them solve their problems. Mm -hmm. And it must be quite rewarding when you've you've worked with somebody and you've created this this sort of uh, uh, end product and presented it to them. It is. I mean, with oh. video especially, you can press play and you can look back at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, um, writing as well. Um, you know, you you can sit back and you can read what you've done, but with the video videos, you know, I've got many factors in them. One of them is entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I never forget that a video has to entertain people. And entertaining doesn't necessarily mean having them laughing or whatever. It just means that you're keeping their attention and that there is a way of doing that. There is a structure in mm -hmm. stories and there's a structure in creating videos that from the very beginning of a video to the very end of a video, uh, you've got to keep somebody's attention. In other words, you've got to keep them entertained, even if it's a serious video. Entertainment does not necessarily mean fun and games and laughter. It mm. means keeping attention. Mm. And, and um, we, you know, a lot of people have a, a, an aversion just having their photograph taken, let alone being in a, in a you know, a moving picture. So what, what do, do you find problems with that? You know, how, how do you overcome that? Or what would you say for people that are nervous about appearing on a video? Well, not every video has got to have people appearing in it uh, where they are very conscious of speaking to the camera. Um, but for instance, if I interview someone, as I, you know, I, I do quite a lot of interviews for my clients, um, when I interview someone, I, I just make it a conversation. I make it very casual. They are aware that it's a chat and you can edit it. You know, nothing is written in stone. You know, if we go for an hour, I might use 10 minutes mm -hmm. and I just pick the best bits out mm -hmm. and I make it look really good. And by the time we get into chatting, the camera kind of becomes secondary. It becomes part of the furniture in a sense. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, they may be a bit nervous, a bit formal, a bit sort of um, uh, straight. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they relax and then you start chatting. And, and once you start along a line of conversation that they're interested in, uh, they just kind of get into it. They forget about everything else, you know, and I usually get a lot of good material. Uh, that, but that's when you're directly interviewing someone. Some people definitely don't want to be interviewed, which is not a problem. Mm -hmm. You find other ways of dealing with it. You know, you talk about, um, you talk about their product or their service, or if you're, if you're doing a brand video and you're talking about the company, 
then maybe you use photographs uh, or you have them in action where they're not actually talking to the camera uh, or you talk to their employees or other people who know them, who can support the journey that they've taken. There are many ways of finding out more about them, but I, it's quite rare, I have found, um, for people to be terrified of the camera. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And uh, over the last couple of years, when you know when we've been going through the uh, pandemic, certainly technology and the use of uh, online platforms like this has very much come into the um, uh, into a lot of people's world because they've been forced to do that to sort of sustain their business. So, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Do you think people are more comfortable with video now? Do you think the 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 use of zoom by people and producing things like this you know is it making it video more acceptable is it making things worse is it is content getting worse or better what, what, what are your thoughts on the the impact of technology over the last couple of years people are much more comfortable in front of the camera now uh, that's for sure uh, i've noticed this um from the very beginning of uh the pandemic and when people started getting onto zoom uh, in, in many different forums, because, you know, I've, I, um, I'm involved with groups that are here in the UK or over in the US. Um, I, I talk to people. Yeah, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, and I've got quite a large customer there. And I deal with uh, some of number of, of their different people in their company. And at the beginning, some people were very afraid of being in front of the camera on Zoom and seeing themselves or teams uh, and they got very used to it and now it's just like normal mm -hmm. uh, people come on to, to to teams and zoom calls very easily partly because a lot of people now are working out of the office they're working from home and they have to do that they've learned not only to speak in front of the camera or speak to their colleagues Essentially, they're looking at a, a screen, a computer screen, which they're quite used to doing. So that's helped a lot. They're not necessarily looking up at the camera like I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, another thing is uh, they've, they've learned uh, how at the beginning, you know, they were in all kinds of situations and, you know, their backgrounds were terrible. Now, now people have learned how mm -hmm. to present themselves in front of camera, how to look good. Uh, you know, by trial and error, really, by doing it, <laughs> by yeah. force. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I've still got a face for radio, but I'm grinning and bearing it anyway. Uh, so, you uh, great job, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've probably touched on this a little bit in uh, the previous answers, but but there's, there's other copywriters, other videographers out there. Uh, what would you say makes you different from your competitors? Well, there are a lot of very skilled and talented people out there. I don't particularly compare myself to them because they've got skills I don't have. I, I work with a lot of people. I work with freelancers. Um, I work with other writers um, in video. Where I do mainly video nowadays. Um, my writing is fairly much restricted to a few of my fairly large clients, which that keeps me a bit busy. But in video, um, I deal with very, very talented camera people, makeup artists, production people, um, editors, uh, make, uh, you know, people, when I get a crew together, still photographers, um, and I realize that they have skills that I don't have, but I also have skills that maybe they don't have. Mm -hmm. I think my skills come through my life experiences and my desire to help others and my 40 years of creating content for businesses, large and small. What I've developed, I believe, is, and I've been told, is an empathy and an understanding uh, over those many years of dealing with people and a way of communicating with most people on most levels in most demographics. I've found that I can communicate on every level, whether it's the board level, um, all the way down to, you know, like I did a documentary recently for Kettering General Hospital and I communicated with everyone from the board, the, the top rung through all the, the heads of management, nursing and so on, all the way down to the porters and uh, the cleaners and people like that. And 
that's kind of, I think, what my differentiator is, is that I have empathy for everyone mm -hmm. and I can communicate with everyone and I'm comfortable on all levels. Yeah, no, I remember seeing the uh, the, the Ketchum Hospital video. Yeah, it, it came across really, really well, uh, as I would expect from you, Robin, nothing less. So do, do, you, do you have um, uh, ideal clients as such? Is there anybody particularly that, you know, you're looking to work with or you regularly work with? Would you say there is somebody, there is a perfect client for you? I, this is this, I find this is difficult for most people. Um, and I know that there are people in the community, in the business community, um, I can mention uh, Jessica Shales. Um, she's, she's helped me, for instance, uh, trying to target my audience, which I, I find, I used to find very difficult. But I believe that my ideal audience are businesses, people, or companies that uh, believe in video that understand that video is a good tool. I think I've passed the stage of really trying to convince people that video is, is, is a good tool to use. Some people don't want video, which is fair enough. Um, they go with flyers and copywriting and so on, and that's all that they do. Um, but I'm interested in working with companies and people that believe that video is, is a powerful marketing tool and especially believe, um, or are interested in the idea of storytelling. Um, and I think the companies that I deal with a lot are companies that have marketing departments or um, have somebody in it. If there's not a department, it's, it's an individual who deals with marketing, who understands that they've got to have content in order to market. And that's what I am. I'm a content creator. And my specialty is video and copywriting. And that's the kind of content I can offer. So I look for companies um, that uh, do marketing and understand that they have to market to survive. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't market, you don't sell, you don't sell, you don't survive. Mm -hmm. um, and you need content to market, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, as, as we touched on earlier, the last couple of years, we've been uh, striving through um, uh, the COVID crisis, if that's the right word for it. Um, and that has been the biggest challenge for most businesses in the last couple of years and has impacted uh, others, others um, uh, uh, more or less, uh, depending on what sector you're in. Outside of that on your business journey, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you've faced? I know exactly what the biggest challenge I've faced is. <laughs> and everybody tells me from my wife to my children to my anybody that has um, business advice as anybody. And that is that um, the biggest problem I've ever had is thinking like a business person and a creative person at the same time. <laughs> right. Okay. That's my biggest problem because I just, I'm a creative person. I think creatively. 24 seven, I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, I'm thinking of things creatively. And mm. business is hard work. <laughs> mm. Mm. No, it absolutely is, absolutely is. You know, it's, 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 I think it is a shock when people first do set up business on their own, whatever, whatever sector they're in really, um, or where they've come from. I think they, they do find certain aspects of it challenging. So that's been my experience on when I've been doing these spotlight interviews. Um, you know, it, it, it is the, shock of having to do your own accounts or not really know what marketing is and all, all those sort of like things that, that hit you which you don't realize you don't know what you don't know do you really but uh, but uh, hang on in there robin you'll get there you'll get there <laughs> so um uh, another question popped. Oh, you, you I, I apologize one of my lights has gone off <laughs> okay no worries so you you, you mentioned um earlier your, your sort of uh, passion for poetry and music do, do you still find time to uh do do those things um, I, I still, I, I've, all, I've always write, um, but I am getting back to my songwriting. I got away from it for a long time, um, but it is a very good way of expressing myself. Um, and uh, I was a lyric writer before I was anything else. Um, I'm not so much into poetry. I've tried poetry. It's a bit different, um, but I am a lyricist. In other words, I write song lyrics um, that go along with music. Uh, mm. I, often a melody comes with that. I have kept um, doing it, you know, over the years. Uh, I keep going into studio. I, I keep my hand in 
I'm a member of the um, IVA's uh, Academy, which is the used to be the British Academy for Composers, Songwriters, and Authors. Um, so I'm a member of that as well. And I listen to music all the time. And yes, um, I will be getting more back into uh, to songwriting. Uh, I've just kind of, it's been in the background, mm -hmm. but I, I still write creatively, yeah, all of the time. Excellent. And also, um, the thing with songwriting, with songs, you know, songs bring out emotion. Mm -hmm. And emotion is the strongest element in a story. You mm -hmm. know, we, we have different emotions. Uh, you go through a story, you feel distress maybe when your character is under real pressure or you feel relief or elation when your character is succeeding. You go through all of these emotions in a story, in a movie, in a book, of, you know, in, in any, any story really, um, even nursery rhymes. Uh, but emotion is at the heart of all of it. And that, um, that ability to tap into emotion that came with lyric writing is something that has kept with me in writing for business. Mm -hmm. Because I realize that emotion has to be, uh, you, you've got to get emotion across because you can't connect with your customer, your listener, your, your, your audience, unless you connect with them emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. Even if you're selling bleach, somehow you've got to connect with them emotionally, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I look forward to your first album, Robert. <laughs> so you, you, you've kindly agreed to sort of like share some of the some of your knowledge with us. So I'm going to put you in a, a, a solo mode and just uh, uh, give you the floor. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Um, I'll just uh, share a few bits and pieces um, about storytelling and storytelling in business. And... Um, the first thing is that there is a science to storytelling. The two main emotions that we experience when we hear a good story are distress and empathy. And something happens within us when we are engaged in a story. I guess the easiest example of that would be a movie. You're looking at a film and there's a character and you are invested in the character, you feel empathy toward the character, uh, and the character then is presented with a problem. And this is when the story really begins in the movie. It's called the inciting incident, or it's when the story actually takes off. And then this, the, the movie or the story is all about the character overcoming the problem that they're faced with. And we feel both distress and empathy as the character goes through that journey. And at the end of the movie, they succeed against all of the odds and we feel very relieved. What happens within us is in that whole journey, we uh, the chemicals released within our brain and within our body. And those chemicals are what keep us occupied. Now that, uh, can be translated into business. And that's what I've spent my life's work doing is translating the principles of storytelling and the science of storytelling into business. Because when we look to communicate with a customer, uh, exactly the same thing happens. Our customer has a problem and we are in business to help them solve that problem. That's a value that we offer in business. We're in business to help them solve that problem. And uh, if, we, if we think of our customer as an individual, uh, they've got their own little world that they live in. And our challenge uh, as, as business people and as communicators in, in, in marketing is to understand the world that they live in, the customer that we want to reach. They live in their own little world. And what we've got to do is we've got to somehow get into their world and communicate with them, empathize with them, know how they feel, know what they're going through in their world, know that the problems that, they, that, that, that they're facing in their world, understand how our product or our service can help them solve the problem that they're going through. And then what happens is once we communicate that to our customer, 
they begin to open up and let us into their world. What I have found or what I have spent my career doing is using storytelling to get into that world, to build a bridge between uh, my product or my service and my customer's world. And the way that I build that bridge is by sharing stories, stories that they can identify with. And the stories that I share with them go deep into their neural networks. It, it, they, they trigger the same chemicals that I talked about uh, when you're listening to, you know, looking at a movie or reading a book. And so storytelling to me is uh, one of the most effective ways of getting attention and keeping attention. Uh, one way we keep attention is by uh, understanding that we're all curious beings. You know, we all, the curiosity factor, we want to know what's going to happen next. Um, they say that uh, gossip, <laughs> they say that gossip was one of the earliest forms of, 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 of news and, and uh, carrying information because people want to know what's going on. Well, it's that curiosity that really uh, keeps our customer listening to our story. So once we can structure a story and uh, communicate that story in business, either through video, which is what I specialize in, or writing, or there are many other ways of communicating um, uh, stories in business, then we have the attention of the person we're trying to reach. And I think that that is one of the most valuable things these days. Uh, I think attention in these times uh, of digital noise and social media and our inboxes filling up with everything, attention is probably the most valuable thing we can have, we can ask for um, from the people that we're trying to reach. If we can get their attention, then we've got something. Then we can start uh, shepherding or moving uh, ideal customers toward the sale, basically. And that's what marketing is. Marketing is the way that we move our ideal customers toward the sale uh, with video. Um, so that's kind of about storytelling, but with video, there, there are lots of different videos that you can use in business. The training videos, product and service stories, the founder stories, videos that tell customer stories, a video that introduces you to your audience and tells your story, their brand stories, um, their advertorials, their case studies, I could go on and on, um, but there are many types of videos that you can use in business. And I just finish off by saying that video is probably the most powerful way of communicating today. Everybody's used to video now. Uh, the pandemic, one thing that it has done, it's gotten everybody used to video. And people will stop and look at a video that captures their attention from the very beginning and keeps their attention throughout and that's, uh, that kind of attention is the sort of gold that you can't just take for granted. You, it, it does make, take an effort to do that. Um, and it's worth doing. Okay, thank you very much for that. So a lot of useful um, uh, advice there, Robin, thank you. So what, what, one final thing, um, and then your ordeal is over. Um, if you were to give sort of one top tip for any business owner out there, uh, what would that top tip be? My top tip for everybody listening to this is never stop marketing. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely that's absolutely true. Because I think sometimes, certainly when um, situations like going into a pandemic or recession or something like that, uh, marketing is is something that uh, so people let go. And it was interesting, to sort of like see how similar sectors adopted a different approach when the pandemic hit. Um, you know, so obviously part of my business is networking, so I was interested to see how people uh, just drop the networking straight away whereas other people in the same sector continued it even though their business was suffering so yeah i think think absolutely you know whatever's going on for you um i think you, you do need to be sort of like making sure that people know you're still there that you're out there and doing that so yeah perfect tip so thank you very much for your uh time today robin um i think we'll end the broadcast there thank you very much paul